welcome back to It Gets So Lonely Here with, well, a lovely, lovely gravedigger. Where we're still here, where we finally get to keep on going. Stop abusing! Back to the story. You do not try to tell the gravedigger. Therefore, uh, that her mother loved her, that she must have done so, done it else. She would not have given birth to her. Instead, you sit there, letting, letting the brush run through your hair, and you say quietly that you understand. Sometimes you feel like a, disapp a, a disappointment to sell. Wow. Gravedigger says, after a pause, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I guess it happens to all of us. <laughs> you guess so. Parents are only people. After all, well, one would have one parent. Parents would be kind and attentive. They too only fall victim to a compromise of their own. Yes. Just because one brought one has brought a child into the world, it does not mean. One will be able to take care of it properly. Uh, that's true. Not all parents are responsible. Just as not all people are responsible. It is a painful subject. Oh, uh, oh well. It's alright if my mother never liked me. Or even if she never loved me. I knew my father did that's all that matters. He always, he's always there for me, no matter what. Your companion's voice catches in your throat. He, he winces. At least until he wasn't. Okay. Died. And I didn't do a thing to help. Your companion's shoulders are beginning to shake. You still can't see her, but you can feel her body convulsing. You can sense her loneliness rolling from her wind. And it is consuming like the water of deep dark ocean grief anew pierces your heart now not on your behalf but for the sake of your of your benefactor he does not deserve to suffer so much this you have no qualms with telling her. You turn to your face to her and pluck the brush, which has been hovering in the air, in inert for, uh, from her fingers. Then you let her know that her father's death was not her fault. Uh, what could she have done? Oh. You freaking dude, the freaking plague was a thing. She could not have. She could have had a cause to his illness. I know, but I can't help but think. What if I uh, I kept wrecking my head over and over trying to come up with. 
But I can't think of anything. And even if I could, it's too late. He's already dead. He died and buried. He's got him buried. I buried him. And now I'm all alone. He might have been alone. You tell the gravedigger. But he isn't now. And not anymore. Oh, yeah, we have main character over here. <laughs> How can she? How can she be when you're when you are there? I know that. I know I am a great, but I don't know if I deserve. It. Why would she not deserve your company? Not like you have anywhere else to go. You're with the grave digger, and there's nowhere else to go outside of like empty houses. You do not understand. Because I can't do anything to go back. My father always looked out for me when I was a little girl, but when he needed me the most, I failed him. I failed everyone. All of the village, all of my friends, all died. What would I do if the same thing happened to you? I don't think I could hear the bear. I don't want to get sick too. Not when I care about you so much. I thought I'd gotten used to being on my own. But now you're here, it's making me worry all over again. I've been worrying so much, I can't sleep right now. Well, it's in isolation for like what? We could assume, what, maybe a couple of years? It makes sense to someone to kind of walk by and you finally find a friend again. I'm scared. Your, your compassion, your companion's voice is in your throat. And she collapses in on herself. She leans forward in your arms. Wound, wound about her, almost her middle. As if, a, as if she's steady herself. And she cries. Cries and, and she cries and she cries. For a few moments, you look at the gravedigger, unsure what to do. The pale face stricken with silvery, silvery tears seems to flicker in the candlelight. Her shoulders, which seem too slender, bare. The common weight, the weight of all her all the sorrows has endured or shaken. Your few, your few rule of thumb, continues to cling to you as the insistence, as the fog which rolls again soon to the graveyard at night. You are not so very tired, however. You can you cannot offer your hostess some comfort. And you do not know what you can say to console her. You feel too worried and too weary to think of a pretty solution. Damn it! Using words I'm not. I'm, I very rarely speak, damn it. But there is nothing you can think of. You would not typically be bold, of course. But you are tired enough for one. 
for one. Pro condition for the win. For Dr. That and your and the tears of the great Jagger are fully assured. Oh, and you, I got a good one. Hell yeah. Be a good Samaritan. You open your arm, and before the gravedigger can pass comment, you pull her close to your chest. Oh. A soft embrace keeps the lips of the gravedigger. It's shorter than the sound of a wrestling snow as it pushes the ground. Then there is nothing. Grave digger is stiff in your arm. For a few moments, like the corpses, she and her father used to steal away by their wooden coffin. She is twisted eyes and awkward, pointed elbows, her tears still oozing down, held teeth. And well, briefly, as you hold her, that you have perhaps made a mistake. Where, through your attempt at controlling her, to be clumsy? <laughs> you would not know. You have never been in a situation like this before. You have never controlled any friends before, but you have never had any friends at all. Damn it. It is not so. It is not so now, however. However, you are far away from your old life as possible. She and she and the grave digger does not curse you for being impeding. Neither does she try to squirm away from you. Instead, she sits there, still as a statue, with Harry buried in your arm. Oh, oh, I, 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 yeah. I was very sorry to show you so embarrassing. But I, it does. I get so lonely. You're not lonely anymore. <laughs> until the long laugh. Uh, until at long last. With a early, earthly snot, uh, sob, she lets out, lets the full weight of her body. And pure. You run, you run your hand as the sobbing companion's shoulder, her shoulder blade, and her back, and gently you smooth and you soothe her. Tell her that she does not need to apologize. There's no shame in crying. You hug her for any, any minute while she sobs against you at your chest, sweating the front of your nightgown. No further words pass between the you night and you and the night, but they do not need to. Words are irrelevant in a moment. As tender as this, shared between two souls who have came to an understanding, one to you know, one another, together, mutually lonely. Here's the slide between your You feel exhausted, and the grave digger joins you without asking her for permission. It would be unnecessary to play the pat lightning. Really, 
given your acquaintance. This is your acceptance. All but sure. You have already accepted the grave digger. After all, every single inch of her. You have accepted her honesty, hospitality. You have accepted her food. Now you are accepted. You're accepting her company. You arrange yourself beneath the tree. Then draw her body close to you. Her body to you. The grave digger has not yet changed in her nightwear. Her clothes will be horribly rumpled. Rumpled. When she wakes, the way comes the following morning. Her head resting against her chest. But tomorrow has uh, has ceased the matter. Matter. It no longer exists. There is no concept concept of time between the two of them. No thought. The day which will dawn on the night inevitably ends. Yet there is only a warm stare between you and the waiter witness on the on the cheek of the grave digger. There is the sound irregular now uh, irregular now less intense than before of your companion's muted muffled, muffled sigh. There is a gentle, tender moment snatched in the, in the middle of the deep dark night, which can never be replaced. Your eyelids fall heavy as though wait, waited down with snow. They drop her er, er, <laughs> actually down a little. Hold you like a drowning maiden into the darkest, impenetrable abyss of slumber. You yawn. Then you fall asleep. Feast <laughs> upon bit beside the grave digger, like two cats in a basket. You sleep, and you sleep, and you sleep, more deeply than you than you have allowed yourself for quite some time. But when you awake, you find that you are no longer in a bed, upon which you slept there, surrounded by sheep. And from here, I think it's the best time to kind of end the episode. Because one, we finally get to see our beloved main character. Oh, thank you. From here, best time to end the episode. But I hope, hope you guys have a great, love that with a great day too. But like, question, what the hell we're going to do? Oh. Uh, See you guys next time. I question how the fuck we're gonna get out.